Welcome back to part two of Ed's two-part series. I'm Laryl Silverhand, the Open Lord of Waterdeep and a Chosen of Mistra. If you did not have the opportunity to check out part one, there will be a link to that down in the description. Also, leave us a comment and let us know if you have any other questions that you might like me to ask Ed about Laryl. And please be sure to subscribe. It really helps us out so much and you can stay updated on all new weekly Realms Lore videos. Enjoy. Okay, so... Ed, I am a little bit curious about Laryl's time with Elminster. Uh, we know how Laryl felt about Kelvin, quite obviously, but I am curious uh, maybe what that time looked like with Elminster, uh, how she feels about Elminster, kind of how they interacted, and how that time with him might have influenced her time, what she's doing now, you know, as the Open Lord of Waterdeep and her kind of machina machinations, um, you know, being such a powerful magical user herself. If we're, if we're talking about Elminster's time bringing her up, then you know, uh, the, the think think of um, squirmy, rebellious little little girls. You know, it, it, literally, <laughs> sure. they they that was that era, and there was how they got all, along with Elminster back then, versus how they get along with him now. I mean, centuries have passed for all of them, which is something that you know, it's it's. I, I know when, when gamers ask me questions about um, all of, of the people in the realms who've lived long lifespans, longer than our normal mortal lifespans, they find it difficult to wrap their heads around the fact that um, when you've been alive for that long, your feelings and viewpoint and tolerance can change. For one thing, unless you really, 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 really hate somebody, um, you have a lot more time to just grow patience and get used to them. And uh, in particular, Laryl is one of the most patient of the Seven Sisters because she could put up with Kelvin, and most <laughs> of the time when she was putting up with Kelvin, she was curbing his temper or trying to hold him in check or calming him down um when he just wanted to I started all around you know and 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 she's just trying to say things like um you know <laughs> 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 well, that's so funny that you mentioned that because you and I had talked, I think it was in a live Q&A recently, about how Kelvin and Elminster didn't always see eye to eye. And in fact, the first interaction Kelvin and Elminster had at your in your home game at your table was like totally contentious. Mm -hmm. So I find that I find that kind of curious how that might influence how someone like Laryl sees Elminster when she's obviously so close to Kelvin. Uh, okay. Laryl views... Um, okay, the, the easy, the shorthand for playing Kelvin at your table is James T. Kirk. I'm the yeah. Starship <laughs> Enterprise, okay? Sure. Um, but Laryl views Elminster as, oh, if Kelvin ever grows up, he might be Elminster. <laughs> <laughs> meaning, meaning she sees, and I, I don't mean this as, as any disrespect to Kelvin, but right. she sees... Elminster as having had enough bad experiences, um, reverses. I don't I, I don't mean necessarily bad thing, but I mean um where what he wanted to happen blew up in his face or his carefully cunningly laid plan didn't work, mm -hmm. that he's he's had to learn patience. Patience that Kelvin hasn't learned yet. Kelvin's still trying to force the world to be in his image, and Elminster long ago figured out it's never going to be in his in his image, but he also, just as Kelvin does, continues to loyally serve the goddess of magic, Mistra. So he's going to give it the college try. Uh, uh, you know, El Elminster is okay. That's not going to work, but I'm going to do it because I was ordered to do it. Fine. Yeah. Sure. You know, um, <laughs> it's not up to me. It's, it's, you know, my job here is to serve. And if the goddess thinks that will work or her servitor thinks that will work, I know darn well it won't work, but that's not my case. My case is to let's see if, how far we can get. 
you know, in terms of successes. And in some cases, I honestly think that Mistra knows that, that it's not going to work. Let's just see how far my mortal servants can manage to carry this this time. You know, each time we get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Let's let's see, you know, and, and they learn things, and I learn things about their capabilities and their limits, and sometimes they surprise me. Won't that be fun? And, <laughs> you know, and I think that increasingly, Laryl appreciates that Elminster is the pragmatist where Kelvin is still too often, not all the time, too often inflexible. No, we've got to do this. This is the right way. This is what, you know, it's, it's, it's like having the paladin in the party saying, we can't sneak up on them. You can't stick a dagger in into their back, Mr. Thief. That's not how we do things. And the thief says, well, you're going to get us all killed. <laughs> you know, I could just, I could, I could sneak up and just put my dagger into his back and that'll be it, you know, but, oh no, we have to, you know, so you have that sort of thing. And, and Kelvin is that sort of thing. So I think what Laryl appreciates is that Elminster is the ultimate, uh, veteran and pragmatist, whereas Kelvin doesn't seem to have learned all the pragmatic lessons yet, even though he's done tons of missions and so on. So he has a lot of experience. He doesn't seem to have learned enough from it yet to change his way. Like, he's still determined to bend the world to his wants. And Elminster long, long ago learned that, no, it's not me. It's not about me. It's not about bending the world to my wants. It's about getting what a Mr. wants done. And the world is never going to bend to my wants, so I should stop trying because I'll break it. The world, that is. <laughs> um, I should stop trying and just get this mission done. What what do we need to do for this mission? Good, let's do it. Um, let's stop having all these fights over, you know, how we do things or whether that's the right thing to do. It's the right thing because Mr. told us to do it. It doesn't matter what we think, whether it's right or not. Mr. told us to do it. We don't have time for this. I mean, yes, we do have time for this. We have all the time in the world, but you are wasting everybody's time and making us all tired. And... <laughs> I think very often Laryl has reached the same conclusions and that's why she's trying to steer Kelvin. You know, right. yes, my love, I know you want to do this. I know that's the right thing. But just for once, can we not just complete the mission and worry about improving people's mindsets later? I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, yes, they need an attitude adjustment, but we don't have time for that now. What we have time to do is get it done because dinner is burning at home. So can we right. just do it? Whereas she would never, ever have those conversations with Elminster because Elminster would look at her and she'd look at Elminster. Their eyes would meet. They'd both nod. They'd know what they had to do now and they'd just work together as a team. Because if there's one thing that Laurel learned over all those years of being his apprentice, remember, after the other two sisters left to make their own way, she stayed as his apprentice for quite a bit, one of the things she learned was, I can trust this man. The, the, he's one of the, and one of the rare things in life for all of us, in real life, you know, if, if you want to hear any moral lessons, kiddies, from the, listening to this video, <laughs> this is where you tune in and pay attention for five seconds. Okay, someone you can trust is the most valuable treasure you will ever find on this planet. And... Even when Elminster seems to be doing and saying crazy things, absolutely not far things, Laryl knows she can trust him. Whatever he's trying to do might not work, but his heart is in the right place, and it's the best road forward for them at this time. So regardless of what she personally thinks, she trusts him, and that is a valuable treasure beyond price. Um, she also trusts Kelvin, but she trusts Kelvin in a completely different way. To her, Kelvin is eminently predictable. She knows what he's going to do. Right. And she knows what brush fire she's going to have to put out because of it. Because, oh, here he goes. I, I, oh, you shouldn't have said that. Here we go. You know, um, she, she, she's that sort of thing with Kelvin. Um, with Elminster, it's like, 
oh no, now you're going to give Elminster a chance to show off and be clever. And then, <laughs> then, then Elminster will look at her and wink and she'll relax and say, and thank goodness he doesn't feel like being clever tonight. Won't that be nice? Let's just get it done. So, I mean, there's the difference. Yeah. Yeah, she would have to be extremely patient with the way that Elminster and Kelvin are, are regularly poking and bickering <laughs> yes. at one another. Yeah, trolling each other. Um, I feel like that's a common thread in a lot of the things that I've read of your work, which is, you know, that that kind of that underlying narrative of hubris, right? That that Icarus story. I mean, look at Myth Dranner, right? Which by the way, if you haven't had the opportunity, be sure to watch the Myth Dranner episode on the channel. Um yeah, I mean, you know, get get a little too close to the sun next thing you know you're waltzing with devils and demons so <laughs> yep <laughs> not always great to uh you know that i know we can but should we um yeah <laughs> so, yeah exactly so getting back to uh laryl though i do want to say that the image that i have of laryl is kind of it's almost like she's almost beyond reproach right she's she's near perfect she's beautiful she's intelligent she's long-lived she uh you know she's wise she's knowledgeable she doesn't even sleep for God's sake. So I am curious if Laryl might have uh, a weakness, right? Does Laryl have any blind spots? If somebody were trying to catch Laryl off guard, how would they go about doing something like that? Well, these days, they would show up as Kelvin. Oh. Because she'd be sure. so shocked. And, and there's always this tiny bit of her that has always thought, oh, he can cheat death. He can, sure, you know, he will find a way. So, you know, if, if you walked into her room looking like Kelvin, mm. she'd go, my love, you managed it. And she'd be all vulnerable to an attack by a stranger because sure. she, she's hoping beyond hope that it's real. And she helps her Kelvin back. So, oh my God, that is so sad. That, that yeah, <laughs> that, is, that is so sad. <laughs> that is her, her weakness right now. Her, vul yeah. her big vulnerability. Um, I don't know that she has any hidden weaknesses because the fact that she loves being an adventurer and when she was an adventurer, she loved hanging out with fellow adventurers she could trust, her, her peeps, you know, her band. And that mm -hmm. meant um, drinking and, and bedding, all of them, regardless mm. of gender and race and everything. It was like you hung out together, you shared all things, you took pleasure in each other's company, so, uh, which is sure. very much at variance with the public persona she's doing right now as Open Lord of Waterdeep. You know, she's. Right. Um, you look at the illustrations of her, the fifth edition illustrations, she looks almost virginal. You know, right. it's... Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's, it's the... Uh, and she has to put on this act of I am you know Miss Goody Two Shoes um and I I I I'm I, I'm sorry I have to deliver this sad news but I I'm merely the spokesperson for the masked lords and they do rule Waterdeep and and mm. they are wise and if they have decided this it's probably the best thing so although you may find it um uncomfortable or shocking or um infuriating even please rest assured that they mean it with the best of motives and i am here as their spokesperson and you know would you not trust me um because after all um i have beautiful teeth and hair and no <laughs> <laughs> accountant by day punk rocker yeah by night. <laughs> um but but no um that to me uh that that's always the thing lurking there um laryl acts like um the president of the local women's Christian association. And then you think, you know, she used to be an exotic dancer in her youth. And <laughs> uh, somewhere my daddy has, has uh, photographs. He snapped when cameras were new of her in, well, looking quite different than she does now and in quite different situations. And if you thought, if I found those somehow and confronted her with them, she wouldn't be appalled or annoyed. She'd say, oh, you found those. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look, he got it in focus. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and, and that's a side of uh, Laryl that would absolutely astonish most younger Water Davians who never knew the older Laryl, who haven't been around for all those years. And what they think Laryl is like, they would just be flabbergasted for that side of her. Anyway. And 
Sorry, I'm laughing about the in focus thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, I love the idea that she would just be fine with it. She would just be like, yeah, man, rock and roll. We all have a past, right? Yeah. Um, if, like me, you love the realms, then become a direct supporter of it. It's that support that allows us to continue creating new realms lore as well as videos like this. You can find him at patreon.com slash edgreenwood and become a protector of the realms. To all of the current patrons, thank you so much. You make this entire thing possible. I am curious, kind of on a, on a similar thread as that, is there something that Laryl maybe keeps secret? And and maybe this is like a proclivity, or maybe this is an experience or a particular interest that maybe she's never divulged to anyone. I know it's kind of hard to keep things from Mistra, but maybe not even Elminster, right? Maybe not even Kelvin, something that's very, very close to her. Well, I don't know that this would surprise Mistra. Um, but, or Azuth, for that matter. Mm. Um, but I, I think that, uh, Laryl's done a very good job of not breathing a peep of it these days. Um, and that is the fact that she had to give up her kingdom. Oh. And the kingdom doesn't exist anymore. Like, it fell apart. It was like, you don't have time to rule this kingdom when you're being a, a, a chosen. Right. And, and of course, she built this kingdom out of nothing. And it was, she was basically told to walk away from it, even though she'd already, out of grief, walked away from ruling. She hadn't walked away from the kingdom. She was adventuring inside her own kingdom, um, helping all the common people, delivering them from, you know, local monsters and raids and so on. She was, in effect, being a queen on the ground riding in and sleeping in their stables and so on and protecting them. She was actually being more of a queen to the common people than most monarchs ever are because she wasn't separate from the common people. And then she had to give it all up. And the moment she gave it up, the kingdom started to decline and was very soon gone. And I think, and this has happened over and over again because uh, Leruar has failed um, and she witnessed it. And then... The Silver Marches fell apart under Illustrial, her sister, and this is a common theme. And I think she has this itch, and I think a lot of the Seven do. Can we just put together a nice kingdom where there's peace and a strong army, and a, therefore um, the, the people, the little people, the common folk can live out their lives and have happy full lives rather than lives between these major wars and um, if the, if it was in the north they'd have to guard against orc hordes constantly so if an orc horde comes up the defenses of the kingdom turn it aside before any of the people have to leave their homes and run shrieking and so on and so forth yeah. they, they, I think they all have this little wouldn't it be nice if you know instead of constantly fighting against all the evildoers and so on and running around the realms constantly leaving stuff in tombs for people to find wouldn't it be nice to actually have a kingdom where it was nice to live in and right. we built it and we worked on it not that we're taking credit for it or anything but that we know when we're really tired and we just want to come home pull off our armor and get into a hot bath for a couple days that there'll be a place that we can do that, and anybody can do that. Everybody who lives there can do that. And we had a hand in building it. And they would feel the satisfaction of, yeah, we actually built a safe place in the realms. And I think that's sort of a pet project that all of them have in the backs of their minds. Sort of like, if Mr. Ever gets tired of this spreading magic around <laughs> all the tombs, gig right we'd really like to have time to just put a kingdom together yeah. i'll finally make it to alcapuco if i could just get some time off work <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so i i know that water deep is water deep and this isn't disparaging of water deep but do you think that maybe not beneath her but do you think Laryl being open lord of Waterdeep is maybe smaller in scope than something that she thinks she should be doing because if her aspirations right are to build a new kingdom May, does she maybe feel like she's wasting time in Waterdeep? Does she take that oh, no, 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 no. very seriously? Yeah, she takes it seriously, and I think the, the, I think she thinks this is the closest she's going to get to that dream of a kingdom right now. So she might as well make the best she can of it, number one. And number two, um, 
in this time in the realms, all the gods are pulling back. Right. And all of the mortals who serve them have less power. And in the case of Lyril, she's really beginning to feel her body aging for the first time. So her own mastery of magic is um, dimming. Uh, her, you know, her level in game terms is um, declining as more and more of her weave energies go into keeping her body functioning. You know, the knees hurt, the back hurts, you know, all that <laughs> right. stuff. All right. that stuff I was saying earlier Relatable. about, about yeah. <laughs> well, you know, wild lovemaking. It's like, yeah, but only if I don't have to use my knees or my back, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, yeah, she is yeah. feeling the slings and arrows of age. You see, the the, the nice thing about um, finally myself living all this all these years is um, all the things I used to just write as fiction to make it clear that my <laughs> heroes and heroines were having a a damn tough time of it. You know, that I was trying to be realistic, so they're sweating and cursing and being in pain and getting wounded and things are going wrong and everything because I don't want you know a Superman who always wins type thing. I wanted it to be realistic. Guess what? It's all happening. As I age, <laughs> oh, okay, this is, okay. I guess I described it pretty well, you know, 40 years ago when I wrote about it, because now I'm feeling it, you know, and, and I think it's in the same way. I think they are all, um, and Laryl amongst them, are feeling the slings and arrows of age. And if Mistra told her to accept this, the goddess Mistra, Yes, we don't have infallible deities in the realms. They are very fallible. But it's also assumed that Mistra, remember, who has died and lived and died and lived and been replaced by mortals, um, thinks this is the best place I should be and the best thing I should be doing for the stability of the world. I presume the goddess I serve is right. And even if it doesn't seem that way to me at the moment, Mr. can see beyond what I can see, so Mistress probably right, so I'm going to do it. And no matter what, as a good servant of Mr., I'm going to do the best damn job I can, just out of self-respect, and to serve the goddess properly, and then let the chips fall where they may. And you got to remember, you have Mert serving her, and you have Elminster serving her. And why is Elminster serving her? Well, guess what? A little bird, otherwise known as Mistra, talked to Elminster, too, you know, uh, and told him, this is what you should be doing. I don't care, you know, uh, how I muck a muck and so on. This is the right place for you to be right now. And as a result, they are all um, taking the goddess seriously and say, okay, I guess that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, on top of that is the fact that if Laryl wants to have a conflab with two marauding old rips who will be explicit in their speech, not just curse words, but calling a, a spade a shovel, you know, to her face, um, in private or in public, she's got them. They're right there. And she can walk down the hall and, I mean, she could literally walk down the hall, knock on the door, and Mert goes, <laughs> and she goes, I, I feel a strong need to get drunk. Have you got clothes on? Nope, but come in anyway. You know, <laughs> you know, have you got booze in there? Yes. You don't have to go mm -hmm. raid the palace things. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, and do you mind if I summon Elminster? Which she can do through the weave. And Elminster's just, you know, in another room of the palace or elsewhere in Mert's mansion. And and he'll say, oh, it's going to be a real booze up tonight. Oh, hey. <laughs> you know, or whatever. Yeah. And, and they can relax that way. And again, you know, depending on how people play their D&D &D and what they may think, it, what, it, are all Ed's games all just debauchery? No, no, it's not that. It's that I'm exploring what it is to be old and trying to keep going and trying to keep a direction in life and... All of these people who are chosen are not what we would call sane anymore because the power does things to you. And seeing the kingdoms you grew up in, not just your loved ones and everybody you knew when you were a kid, all your friends and family die and you, you have to soldier on. But we're seeing 
entire kingdoms that they knew when they were kids go, just gone. What does it do to you? And I'm, I'm exploring that over and over again in realms fiction because I think it's something that is worthwhile in itself um, to do something different than your classical crappy fantasy that you can buy in any bookstore and read. You know, we're doing something a little different here. And whether it works or not, at least it's something different, you yeah, know? Exactly. And, and if it helps anybody deal with real life and, or just helps them think, oh, I know, I would never have thought of it that way, then it will have served its purpose. Yeah. One of these days, I know that we've revealed a couple ones on the Patreon as well as in the, uh, on a couple of YouTube videos on this channel, like Volo, for instance, uh -huh. that I was completely unaware was a Chosen of Mr. One of these days, I'm going to get a full list of all the Chosen of Mr. from you. I don't, we don't need to know about it now. Well, that'll be a future video. <laughs> I don't think we got the time in the day, but I'm going to make you do it one of these days. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. What, yeah. and take away the Dungeon Master's last chance yeah. to sneakily add a Chosen yeah. that we didn't yeah. tell you about until now? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Uh, but, but yeah, no, 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 I, I totally understand the hunger for knowing oh, yeah. that little thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess one of my main takeaways from all of this is that I think that there's an underlying tragedy of Laryl that is really kind of poignant and really kind of powerful in her walking away from, you know, ruling essentially and having lost her kingdom as well as her like clinging to the last vestige of hope uh, that Kelvin will someday come back or return and that he might have cheated death. And I think that that is really helpful to inform how Laryl thinks and inform how we play her at the table. So that's a really strong takeaway for me. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for giving us the, the, the skinny, the 411 on Laryl Silverhand. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Um, it is so nice that we finally get to explore the, the powerful ladies of the realms because yeah. for too long in print, just because of what we were doing in print, which is basically writing adventures, <laughs> um, right, right. Um, the, the queens and the princesses, unless they're being naughty, misbehaving, mm -hmm. or they're mm -hmm. warriors like Alucer, you know, riding all over the kingdom, sleeping with all her young nobles, you know, all that stuff, and fighting with her father. Um, unless that's happening, they just get treated as part of the furniture. Oh, look, nice lady wearing crown in the background yeah, where she belongs. Yeah. And it shouldn't be that way. It right. shouldn't. Um, and, but we're finally getting the chance to shine a light on some of these um, who really are in both the cases of Queen Fee, which we, we did earlier, and Laryl, they are very much the power behind the throne because they're taking somebody who has the power uh, in various ways to do a lot of ill in the world because they were so powerful. Um, Kelvin in one direction and, and the King Azun in the other, you know, um, and it, and they're sort of putting the brakes on them and making them much better rulers and making them, um, far more reasonable and patient with mere mortals who screw up all the time. I mean, one of my abiding lessons I'm trying to drive home in the realms is, yeah, of course they're corrupt. Of course they stole money from the thing. They're human. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. and, and and it's like, what, but what, do you mean that all people are corrupt? Yes. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Have you not paid attention in life? It's not that they want to be. It's not that they're inherently evil. It seems to be part of the beast. So the best way in life is to learn how to deal with it, like curb your own impulses to, to be like that. And what ha happens if you find somebody else with their hand in the cookie jar? How do you deal with it? You know, and this is something that nations, and, and by nations I mean groups of people now, not countries, um, deal with um, when the, their leaders turn out to have feet of clay. Um, <laughs> and uh, what what countries deal with when, you know, the, the inevitable thing, and I'm not going to, I'm not aiming at any real world country because... All you have to do is look at the news and see it happens everywhere. So-and-so used to be in office, and now they're being investigated for corruption and all this money that went missing from the, well, duh, you know, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's yeah. how I react. Um, but it, it's the, let's explore that in the realms. Let's 
because these are imaginary characters and people, and real people don't necessarily get hurt when you're just reading about imaginary... I mean, you might cry while you're reading the book, but it might shouldn't go beyond that. Um, we can explore how, how would I feel in that situation? What would I do? Would I be off with his head? Would I be coming into the courtroom to lop his head off and jump on the throne myself? Or would I say, now, wait a minute. The alternative, if we plunge the realm into civil war, is far worse than letting the devil we know sit on the throne. Like, well, what did he do? Steal 15 cookies from the cookie jar? Um, you think the next guy or gal is going to be any better? You know, so, yeah, so it, it it's it's how you make your more... In fact, that's what you're doing in a, in a good role-playing campaign. You're making physical decisions, military decisions, tactical decisions, and you're also making moral decisions constantly. And having these great long-lived characters on stage isn't supposed to take the thunder of the player characters away. It's, it's to allow the player characters to explore this stuff at the gaming table before they have to do it in real life. Hopefully they never have to do it in real life. And, and, but it, it, it equips you. You could say, wait a minute, I faced worse than this.